don't know how long this will be, but hopefully we can all find how hilariously uncomfortable this was for me. So, I'm invisible, or I'm really good at not being noticed. Add that with me being a quiet loner, people tend not to notice me at all, or right away. Anyway, this happened yesterday after I got off work, so this is still pretty fresh. I was on the bus going to meet my mom to run errands. She drives and I commute. I ride this route quite frequently, and usually have my headphones on, but since I walked straight from work to the bus stop, then on the bus, I didn't have time to put them on. I would not be riding fairly long, so I did not mind not putting them on. One of the stops a few people get on, including our neckbeard, who we'll call NB. He had the whole starter pack of a long trench coat and a hat, like a discount Hugh Jackman as Van Helsing. NB is chatting with people in neighboring seats about his hardcore partying with friends and laughing, then goes quiet when he turns in my direction. I don't see him noticing me as my eyes are watching the street so I can time my stop. This is the back and forth as I remember, cringing ahead. NB Hey, miss. How you doing, beautiful? You want coke? Are you okay? Drinks will be on me. Me I'm good, really. I'm good, but thanks. NB Damn, how old are you? Me Twenty-four. He looked at me up and down and could not believe what he was seeing. I don't know what he's seeing since I'm wearing a black t-shirt and pants and a jacket. Actually glad I was wearing a jacket and could not see my tattoos. Either people are genuinely amazed at the work on me, or it comes across as almost a fetish if people want to know if you have more tattoos than they probably cannot see. If he was a neckbeard, it would probably be the latter. Neckbeard. Hey, so can I give you a call sometime? Me. No, sorry, I'm spoken for. I put my eyes forward, really wanting to just jump out and try and get away as he proceeds to ask if my boyfriend treats me well, and if he doesn't, then he'll have to deal with him. Then telling me that my boyfriend needs to hurry and marry me so we can mesh. Still dying on the inside, my bus stop comes, and I quickly leap off. I cannot believe all the times I'm never noticed it has to be by a dude in a trench coat and a weirdly formed neck beard. So this happened about seven years ago when my husband and I first started dating. We had probably only been together for a few months at the start of the story, just for some background. My husband, W., lived in a two-bedroom apartment with his roommate, G. I lived in the dorms of our college, but spent the weekends with them at their place. On Fridays, the three of us would go to a game club together, and then W. would take me back to their place. This story does not actually revolve around G, believe it or not, though G. was very neck geared like I got a text from W. one night, and he was very upset. He explained that G had invited someone to live with them for a short period of time because the guy did not have anywhere to go. That wasn't the issue W had. The issue was this guy was a complete stranger that G had met on an MLP porn forum, and there had been no discussion about him living in the apartment with them. He also said that he was going to start sleeping with his bedroom door locked because he was afraid the stranger K would come and shank him in the night. After hearing this, I was a mixture of emotions. I was angry with G because of how selfish and idiotic he was being, scared for W, and also very curious about K. W did not want K and I to meet, but our meeting was inevitable since G brought him to the game club. K was almost a picture-perfect neckbeard. He was probably around 30, balding, but had the beautiful classic neckbeard going on had a body odor that could clear room, zero sense of boundaries, and wore MLP t-shirts. He even had an MLP fedora. The only thing he was missing was a trench coat, but he replaced that with a ripped up biker jacket with a bunch of MLP patches on it. When we first met, he tried to kneel and kiss my hand and would tell me how beautiful I was and how it was great to see a lady gamer and other weird bullshit like that. Now, I will admit that at the time I was a very naive person and oblivious to a lot of things. However, this guy had red flags raised all over him and I was considerably creeped out by him. I was way too polite though and just let him keep doing what he did best. Weekends at the apartment got really weird really fast. We mostly spent the days locked up in the bedroom because neither of us wanted to deal with Kay. 
Kay would constantly try and get us to go into the living room to watch MLP or anime. On multiple occasions, I walked out to use the bathroom and caught him jerking off to hentai or MLP porn. It was super awkward and gross. I did my best to avoid it, but how can you avoid something when it's around you constantly? I think the tipping point was when Kay found out I liked to draw. He did some ridiculous motion and was like, Milady is an artist, and would gush about how amazing of an artist I was. Spoilers, I was not good. My art was garbage, but he thought if he liked my art, he might steal me away from W. I asked him if he liked to draw and if I could see his sketchbook. Huge mistake. He let me see it, and I honestly should not have been surprised when it was filled with humanized pony porn. He told me he was working on something I would be interested in. It was me. He made me into a humanized pony. At first, it was just a design, and I had been wearing clothes, but every time he would show me his sketchbook, he kept drawing me in less and less clothing, and eventually he was drawing me having sex with the characters from MLP. He would tear them out and give them to me as if he bestowed some great gift to me. It was cringy and honestly kind of terrifying. I stopped going to their place on weekends and told W I was not coming back until K was kicked out of the apartment. K ended up leaving a few awkward months later. The semester was over and G was leaving. W refused to house K by himself. The last time I saw K, he tried to give me some flowers and told me he would miss me and we should Skype. I refused the flowers. I'm very allergic, and said, maybe, to a Skype call, went inside and immediately blocked his ass on everything. I have not seen or heard from him since, and I'm grateful for that. I think I still have the weird porn he drew somewhere, but it might have gotten lost where I moved. So, some quick info. I'm 26 years old, 5'6", 160 pounds, male, athletic build. I work for a bounty hunting company that also does private events. There are two other officers with me. We'll just call them Officer A and Officer B. There's also N1, neckbeard number one and N2, neckbeard number two to make it easy. So this story takes place about three months ago in March. My company was hired to do security for a quinceanera. For those who do not know, that is a sort of coming of age event for a girl who turns 15 in Hispanic culture, like transition from a girl to a young woman. Anyways, this is about five hours into the event. Officer B and myself are posted up at the front entrance checking tickets for late arrival for the event. While Officer A is on the inside surveying the area, I'd like to note that the event had an open bar. It's 9 p.m. roughly when N1 and N2 arrive together in what you call traditional neckbeard attire. Full gray dress suits with strikingly barely their neckbeards and dark brim gray fedoras to match their suits. Now, this event had two types of tickets. White tickets were there for those who were under 21 and not able to drink. Those with black tickets were those who were able to drink. Now, these fine gentlemen of class both had black tickets so now myself and officer b are well aware they are drinking age we let them in and think nothing more of an hour goes by and me and officer b get hit up on our radio from officer a to come inside and help intervene when we come inside and speak to officer a he is informing us that he is receiving a lot of complaints from the younger females about n1 and n2 hitting on them and making them feel uncomfortable Mind you, a lot of these girls are of high school age, ranging from 14 to 18, so we agree to intervene and Officer A goes and pulls N2 aside, and myself and Officer B goes to confront N1, conversation goes as follows. Myself and Officer B. Sir, we have received multiple complaints about you harassing some of the younger guests and making them feel uncomfortable. This is your only verbal warning. If it continues, you'll be escorted off the property. N1. Relax, I didn't mean anything by it. It's a party. We're just trying to have fun. These girls are young women. They should be happy that an older guy is interested in them, but... Okay, I understand. I'm sorry. N1 walks away. We assumed that he understood, and things were going to be fine. Myself and Officer B went back to talk to Officer A and take up our posts back at the front entrance. Two more hours go by. It's now 12 a.m., last call have been just called out when my, uh, myself, Officer B, received call for backup on our radio. 
We rush in to find the party at a standstill while Officer A is standing baton in hand trying to get N1 on the ground. Apparently N1 and N2 have been drinking heavily throughout the night, and N1 thought it would be a good idea to pick a fight with Officer A. N2 was trying to pull Officer A off of N1, so I jumped in to assist Officer A. When Officer B deployed his taser on N2, leaving him incapacitated. Once both were in handcuffs, police were called. I am happy to report both N1 and N2 were charged with assault. So, a little backstory. I, at the time, was a 15-year-old girl who just got out of a toxic relationship with a druggie. I was assigned to just stay away from relationships for a while to work on myself when my mother introduced me to a man we should call Ant. Ant was your stereotypical neckbeard. He loved MLP, was extremely overweight, and loved anime and comics. He told me over and over again how he was 21, so I figured, mm, six years isn't super bad. He loved to boast about this god-awful comic he drew himself in a published in a free magazine, thinking he was the best of the best from this comic. I was skeptical at first. I wasn't really into being into another relationship so soon after having a recent breakup, but I did it to please my mother with this apparently amazing guy. When I first met him, he was so strange. He reeked of body odor, masked by Axe body spray. He kissed my hand and went up my arm and my cheek and insisted to call me milady. I thought this was odd, but brushed it off as him being awkward and shy. A week later, he asked me out, and I accepted. So began my month of hell. He was keen on getting me to show him my body, which I have suffered from years of self-harm. I was super self-conscious about my body. I refused to do so, which pissed him off. He also got super pissy I would not sleep with him as well. I was fifteen and super scared. I'm that person that has to feel a bond with someone before I can do anything. He was extremely bothered I did not have this bond after two weeks. After figuring out I would not sleep with him, he made it his mission for me to catch him jacking off to MLP and hentai. He also wanted a harem. I was going to get married to him to take care of his kids he was going to have with these other goddesses, as he put it. He wanted all these girls to dress up as anime school girls and worship him, sending me pictures of girls or anime and underwear, and talking about being able to see their vagina flaps and openly masturbating to these pics over the phone with me. The thing that ended our relationship is when he told me that all he does is worship me and I use kick to cheat on him. Ant would take my phone and scroll through my group kick chat with my friends and get super mad he did not include me into the group with all these beautiful goddesses for him to worship. It was a role-playing group full of kids my age. I didn't think a grown-ass man would want to be in there. He ended up manipulating his way into my chat for at least ten minutes in the group before he was kicked out for being a creep to the other ladies. We broke up after this and my stupid ass tried to remain friends. But he continued to pressure me into a relationship, and I lied to him about dating my best friend at the time, Sydney. He refused to take that as an answer and tried to get Sydney to agree on the both of us dating him because we needed a man that would love us and treat us like the queens we were. We ended up blocking him on everything after that. Come to find out, he was actually 30. He lied to me about his age to date a 15-year-old and had Tinder on his phone the whole time we were together. I refuse to date anyone after this dude.